What's up guys, my name is Josh, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Kef Q150. Now for this speaker, I've already done a first impressions video and a comparison against the old Kef Q100. So these are gonna be kind of my final statements and my general review of this product. Every audio company on the market today has its detractors. It has the people who don't like either the speakers or the headphones that that company produces. And with Kef, there's one complaint that I hear above just about anything else regarding why people don't like it. And it's the top end. People think it's too bright and too analytical, especially on some of the older models. And I think people over time just got a little bit burnt on Kef. Now that's certainly not the only complaint that Kef has, but it's one of the more common ones that I hear brought up about Kef speakers. And if you've been staying away from Kef for that reason, I think that this speaker is something to reconsider buying. This speaker is not soft, but warm and smooth. Um, it does have a fair bit of detail, but it's not overly analytical. It's not ever harsh by really any calculation. I've shown this to a number of people because I've owned these for, I think, four months now, and nobody has said anything about the trouble being too bright. Now, what is this speaker good at? Well, soundstage and the disappearing act. The Q150 is one of the more elusive speakers that I've played around with. It really doesn't want me to know where it is in terms of locatability in the room. Uh, these are very forgiving in terms of placement. You can back them against the wall, you can pull them far out, and you're still gonna get good soundstage in suboptimal positions, but it also does a good job of rewarding you for placing them in their optimal position, which is actually pulled out really far away from the wall. And when set up optimally, this speaker is a testament to imaging and soundstage like it's a sport. Now the speaker is also very good at vocals, but vocals of a particular style and more has to do with the imaging and soundstage to delivery. It's very backed up into the music. So it's not gonna be as forward as some other speakers. And depending on your preference, you may like one side over the other. And on the right tracks, like live recordings or large scale production songs like um, Sam Smith's Skyfall is great. Postmodern Jukebox, the whole discography is amazing. Diana Krall, Christy Barron, you name it. That type of music sounds iconic. So, so far it's sounding pretty good, but it's not perfect. Uh, bass response is warm, it is fairly deep, and it is detailed to a point. And once you start kind of pushing these speakers a little bit, you're probably gonna find the limit of it if you try. It's not very hard to do on the speaker. So I'd recommend this not for large rooms. Small to medium rooms are gonna benefit the most from this. I think a medium-sized room is probably gonna be optimal for this, but a large room, just because of the limitations of this driver, uh, I, I don't recommend it for that. And another potentially bad thing is that it's not an analytical speaker. It emphasizes enjoyability and kind of smooth, rich sound over just about every other feature. And if you want that, the speaker is not gonna be the one for you. And the last downside is going to be price. I bought these about four months ago on sale, new, from Amazon for about $350. They go on sale for $350 quite often for that price, I think this is great. I will recommend this all day long for $350. However, normally the price is about $500 to $550. So if you've got $500 to spend and you're looking for a pair of bookshelf speakers, I recommend the ELAC UB5s. In almost every category, it's just a better deal and a better speaker. And if you're not chasing after an extremely smooth characteristic speaker, which is what this is, this is better in just about every category build quality, dynamics, and analytical sound without being too harsh or too taxing on your system. Uh, you just feel like you have a better understanding with the music, and that's what this boils down to. So if you're looking to push $500 somewhere, I'd push it towards the UB5s. The Kef Q150s are great, but I just think that the build quality and the sound is fairly easy to do, and I don't feel like it stands out at the $500 price category. And I think that's going to be it. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Josh signing off.